Hey guys, you heard with Zero Code NFT here. In today's video, I would like to um, break down the anatomy of NFT and see exactly what kind of prep work we need to do in order to prepare your NFT assets to be um, sold and to be minted via a custom smart contract like the one that you can create using our no code uh, smart contract and mint page builder. So to get started, um, I prepared these two folders as an example. So let's say if I wanted, I have these 15 Pokemon images that I wanted to turn into um, NFTs. Uh, first, what I need, there is, there is two pieces to it. Um, there's the actual images, uh, you know, the artwork, and then there is uh, metadata files that describe this artwork. So there's always two pieces that I need, um, images and the metadata. Uh, I got the images fine. Um, now, in order for marketplaces like OpenSea uh, to be able to read your NFTs and know exactly what, what do you what do you have, um, you need to be able you need to provide some sort of description file that describes your NFT. Like so, for example, with Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, you see this, and they have this image of the ape, but also. Um, they have a metadata file that OpenSea reads behind the scenes, and this is how OpenSea knows what's on the image. It knows that the, it has a great background, it has a stunt jacket as a closing, it has uh, crazy eyes. So it, with every NFT image, there should be a file that describes it, and that's what we're uh, going to do today. So um, let's say uh, if we're since I have 15 images, I need 15 JSON files. Um, JSON is just an extension we use for this type of files. And every um, file should be numbered from 1, uh, in my case, to 15, because my collection size is 15. If your collection size would be more, then uh, it would be whatever your collection size is. And the contents of this file will look like this. It has a specific format that we have to follow. Uh, it's called uh, you know, JSON, J JavaScript object notation. And it starts with opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket. And then in between we have uh, some fields uh, or that describe our NFT. So for example, I have a name field, uh, which is in my case called Pokemon number one. Then we have description and we have an image field that points to um, a URL somewhere on the, on the decentralized storage. Uh, where we can fetch the image that this metadata file describes. And how do I know this? How do I know which uh, fields should be in this file? What should go into this file? Well, for that, we can look into OpenSea metadata standards, and I'll include the link in the description below. Um, OpenSea uh, has a very uh, helpful uh, page where they, they described how to add rich metadata to your your CSN 21 or Elan 55 NFTs. And um, if you look here on this example, you can see that they also have a name field. They also have a description. Uh, they have external link and they have some other fields, traits, and you can see exactly where this um, goes in the actual NFT when you're looking at it on the marketplace. So let's scroll down here a little bit and we can see all the um, properties that our NFT can have as well as attributes. And all they also explain where are these attributes, how are they going to be displayed on the OpenSea page when you, uh, you know, as you add them to your uh, JSON file. So let's actually do this. Let's copy their attributes fields and add to our nft here so after image i need to put a comma because every field has to be separated by a comma and then i will paste all the attributes uh, pay attention that in the you cannot have a comma in the end so we we need to have a comma after every field except the last one the last field should not have a comma and if you're not sure if your uh, metadata file is structured correctly. You can always uh, check it by online with a JSON validator. So for example, I will copy this and then 
I will go to this jsonlint.com. I will paste it and validate JSON. I just say the valid JSON. So that, that way we know our um, metadata is correct. And I'll actually copy what they have here and use it because I like uh, their formatting better. Um, so now let's remove some traits here because I don't need all of these and they don't even apply to me. So um, let's say for our, uh, since we are looking at Blastoise, which is a, a water Pokemon, we could have something like type trait and say water and maybe have a, a skin color. And set it to blue and what else let's add uh, one more let's add maybe a, a background background white I don't need any of these so now we have our metadata file complete that um, describes our blast toys Pokemon and again, these attributes, this is not required. If you don't have, you don't, if you don't want to specify any attributes or your particular, you know, um, artwork or uh, something that you're trying to turn into NFT, it doesn't require any additional description of like attributes that it has, then, you know, don't worry about it. Th these three fields are the only ones required. Okay, so now that we um, looked at how the metadata is structured and what goes in there, um, next, we need to figure out where this image has to come from. This IPFS URL goes here. What, what this, should this um, equal to? Um, so for that, there is different storages online. Um, OpenSea suggests to work with either Piñata or Arviv. So for this example, I will use uh, Piñata. I already created an account. So what I'll do now is I need to upload all my Pokemon images. And there is three types, three ways to upload your files. Uh, in my case, I have them on my locally on my computer. So I'll just do folder, select Pokemon, Pokemon picks, upload. Give it a name. Let's actually call it images, upload. Uh, it takes a little while for it to show up, uh, especially if you have more files, so just give it some time. And here we go. And now we have this weird looking um, combination of letters and, and numbers. This is called CID. This is your unique identifier of um, the data that you uploaded to Piñata or to this decentralized IPFS network. So what we, what we want to do is copy this and then go back to our um, JSON file and replace IPFS URL goes here with, with this um, combination of letters and, and numbers. And uh, we would have to do this uh, for the whole, uh, for all 15 files, but in order to save time, I actually, I'm going to reverse this for now. And I actually have a small uh, script that I can use in order to update all files at once. It calls update metadata. Um, so what I will do is I'll just open this script and replace with is going to be this string and then to replace is going to be um, this. So I'm just saying replace in every file, go through each file and replace this uh, string with, with this string. Save, close, and then go back to here and run with PowerShell. And there we go. Now the URL is updated. Perfect. So, and if we look at the other file, we'll see that it's updated over there as well. Um, so now that we um, uploaded our images, we updated all our metadata files to point to the location of where the images are located. Now, the next step is to upload the actual um, JSON files. So um, I don't really need this anymore. 
because uh, I already used the script, so I'll just delete it. And then I'll come back to Pinata and I'll do another folder upload. But this time I will select our metadata folder. And I'll give it a name like Pokemon metadata. Perfect. Now we have our images uploaded. We have our metadata uploaded as well. Um, this is it when it comes to just generating your um, images for your NFTs and your, your metadata and uploading them to the centralized storage. Uh, from now, uh, if you wanted to uh, go ahead and actually mint these as NFTs, uh, you could use um, zero code NFT. And the way the the way where this would be used is, uh, you would need to copy now the CID of the metadata that you just uploaded. And if you already used zero code NFT, then uh, you would go here to create a new contract. Select ERC seven twenty one Ethereum, and this is where you need to use your. Um, IPFS uh, link that you from the metadata that you just uploaded. So it'd be IPFS and like this. You will notice that we automatically um, append the uh, forward slash in the end. Uh, this is intentional because um, on the IPFS, what you uploaded is a folder. So then when our smart contract goes and tries to look up your um, image, it will try to um, use this as as a base and then what it will actually do, it will append one.json automatically so that um, when we when OpenSea or someone else is querying our smart contract and they want to see what is the NFT um, with the token ID number one, uh, basically what they will do, they will just invoke this URL and append token ID and the uh, uh, JSON extension in order to get your asset and to display something like, like this. So for example, if we were doing board apes, um, we would append 54, 65 and uh, one that JSON. But for here, uh, you just need to give it the, the base path and we will, you know, the, op the smart contract will append the token ID based on which token is requested to, to be seen or transferred, whatever the case may be. Uh, now for the uh, for the sake of the example, I'll just create a simple collection real quick and call it Pokemons. Give it a price. Go next, next. Let's create a page, Pokemon, zero code NFT. Your code nft.com 5% royalty goes to my wallet address next and deploy confirm the transaction done now I will um, okay, the contract is still deploying, so we have to wait a little bit. There we go, contract is deployed. Uh, so what I will do is I will just airdrop one NFT to myself. This is our wrong account. Let's pick this one. Actually, I'll airdrop two NFTs. Transaction is accepted. And 
transaction is confirmed. So now I can go back to the dashboard. I can see that we have one owners. We're already pulling the metrics from OpenSea. So I can actually open OpenSea page. And as you can see, my two NFTs are here. And if I open Blastoise, you will see that it has the, exactly the properties that we gave it. If you remember, we gave it a white background, blue skin color and water type. Uh, so everything works as expected. Our NFTs are populating on OpenSea. And this is it for this video. If for some reason um, your NFTs are not showing up, uh, it's most likely just OpenSea sometimes uh, takes a little bit of time for to query the images, especially if your images are of a large size. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it might take a little while. Uh, the good way to check if if it's just the OpenSea have any delay or there was a problem with your metadata maybe. Uh, there is OpenSea has a debugging metadata tool. So since this is right now is deployed on the testnet, this is not the real OpenSea like live, this is just a testing site. Um, so what we can do is we can uh, use their validation um, URL here. So I'll just copy that and paste here. And we need here our contract address and the token ID in order to validate. So let's see how we can get that. Uh, our contract address, we can look at um, details and click on a contract address here. This is our smart contract address that was just deployed. So just copy that and paste it here. And next we need a token ID. Uh, the token ID for this one is, as you can see, is number one. So we will just put one here and click enter. And as you can see, OpenSea says that the token valid true. So that means that our metadata is fine. OpenSea reads it perfectly fine. And as if you remember, I told you that um, we are just giving a base URL and then OpenSea will, or someone who reads your NFT will, will append one.json. You can see it exactly here. So it used, yeah, OpenSea used our base uh, URL that we gave it. It was this weird string of characters. And then it appended one.json in the end in order to check your NFT. So OpenSea sees it fine. Um, so if, if you get uh, valid true here, but no image here, um, then most likely it's just um, your image, maybe your image size is big and OpenSea is still trying to fetch it, still querying it. Or, uh, you know, sometimes OpenSea just, just has delays, so just give it some time. Um, another point I would like to make before um, finishing this video is that uh, you might wonder what type of images can be used and what is the uh, size limit. OpenSea has a support um, article for that as well. So as you can see here, uh, the maximum image size or file size, doesn't matter if it's image video clip or something else, uh, the maximum file size support is 100 megabytes. And you can see which um, formats are supported here as well. So in our case, we, are, we have a .png, so we're good. And all these are supported as well. With that being said, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll also include all the links that I showed you here and the template for the JSON files in the description to the video. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.